Alright, I'm back out here now. I've got the cowling on and the intake scoop closed, so I'm going to do uh, some um, runs just to see how that uh, affects anything and everything with terms of uh, temperatures and drag and mod and stuff. So we'll see here we go. It's uh, a little chilly out today, 54 again. It's actually warmed up quite a lot in the last hour while I was doing that. I'm going to take it for a run down five to start. Well, that was interesting. Um, what is this guy doing? Pool and temps just went sort of uh, way down there, and I was just wondering if it's just because of the airflow there now. Wonder traffic, uh, King Air 700 November Alpha is uh, six miles west, entering uh, left downwind for 3 1. Looks like it's heating up again now. That was kind of weird. As I was taxiing down there, temperatures really went down low on the floor. Turkey traffic. Skyhawk 12 Hotel, uh, four to the north. We're going to cross midfield, 3,200, and join the left downwind for runway 23, Cherokee. Uh, looks better now. Thing looks good. It's just weird. Uh, you know what I think it was. Heater came on and all that cold air and uh, cold cooling in the loop there went back through the engine all of a sudden. And uh, and all of a sudden cooled the engine down. That's what it was. Exactly. All right. Do a quick run down five here. Cherokee traffic, experimental two Tango Delta, runway five, high speed taxi in Cherokee. Alrighty. Let's give this an easy one and see how we go here. Traffic departing five down there. Is it, it favoring five down there now? Uh, negative. There's ac absolutely no wind. I'm just high speed taxiing down here, so you can come in whichever way you like. Uh, roger that. Cherokee uh, traffic. Skyhawk 12 Hotel is going to enter a left downwind for runway five instead of Cherokee. Uh, let me know when you're clear of the runway, please. Thank you. All right, will do, sir.
Yeah, if I get on those brakes right away, I don't have any trouble stopping there from midfield. Cherokee traffic is from level 2, Tango Delta, clear 2-3, Cherokee. I've been monitoring my brakes. I haven't really worn in at all. I mean, worn down at all. I'm actually just going through the break-in period, I think, still. They're supposed to do 20 landings on them with light um, to moderate braking uh, in order to sort of break them in. That's about the equivalent of what I've done. And then after that, they'll get better. They start out as a three millimeter pad and, and uh, you know, when I got them, they were a little bit thicker than that, the material on there, and the minimum usage, or minimum uh, serviceable is one millimeter. And they're still three millimeters, so I haven't really worn anything off them yet. Maybe, you know, 0.2 of a millimeter. All right, I'll just do one more, and then that's enough for today. I'll get some numbers. Look, go, go back and look at the temps and that sort of stuff and see if the cowling is making a difference compared to having it not on. Also, I've got the intake scoop closed today, so that makes a difference. I was thinking it may, may funnel the air. Karen Chaffet, Piper Seneca, 855, Uniform 5 mile final, runway 23, full stop, Karen. I was thinking that the having the, the uh, intake scoop closed is, uh, gives less opportunity for the air coming into it to sort of go over the top of that little vein thing that I have set up there which directs the air into the uh, intercooler and the radiator. So uh, you know, I've been running it up until now with it open, so the air could, could potentially run over the top, but now with it closed, it should be getting better airflow, better cooling under speed than not. as planned with respect to having the cowling on didn't have any uh, you know high temperatures or anything like that seemed like the intake was working well so that's uh, good so far and so next up I decided it was time to pull down uh, the redrive and check inside and also change out the belts because I got the new ones so as you can see I've got the lower redrive off here and now I've got the upper redrive uh, removed as well and I went ahead and started disassembling that as you can see and I wasn't expecting to have any real problems in there because it had been working uh, well and you know hadn't had any oil leaks or anything and sure enough I opened it up and it looked just as good as when I put it together albeit with a bunch of black oil in there which obviously that's the oil coming from the engine in there and from what I've been told um, the oil on a diesel gets pretty black if you run it the engine too rich and sort of you know with the tuning I've been testing I have been doing that a little bit and then on the inside um, these other bearings there that are on the oil shuttle they're just as good as when I put it in there and they're moving nicely and they're not making any noise or anything like that so um, all in all I'm just declaring that a success with respect to how that whole uh, redrive and oil feed for the prop is working and uh, I don't suspect or you know expect to have any uh, problems really going forward because so, I had 25 hours on that already uh, running it you know a lot of that's idling but a lot of it was uh, running it up and down and uh, nothing really there on the prop shaft I mentioned because it's all just sitting on bearings nothing can wear so uh, it's time to get it all um, put back together and just showing you there how the, the main bearing there is moving nicely as well and uh, nothing's worn on that because those bearings are way oversized for what this project needs to be so I wasn't expecting those to wear out and that's what Mark had sort of specced originally for exactly that reason and there was only one place where I had a little bit of a concern that's where this little plug goes in the top here and there's an o-ring that we have that sort of sits in that seat there and 
and fortunately it's not as big a seat as it could be for that o-ring and I did take the thread down on that before when I was doing a different experiment on that but as, as you can see there's the o-ring on there so I ended up just putting also a little bit of um, sealant on that before I put it in there because it was just a tiny bit of oil um, you know seeping out through the o-ring there anyway I got the new belts and um, in the process of putting those on so I've just got everything sort of suspended in there right now so I can uh, get the lower redrive slotted in first and then then comes the upper redrive so as you can see here I've got most of it together and I'm still in the process of doing the last little bit of shimming and stuff to align that upper redrive I want to get it perfect so those belts ride right in the center like they used to when I had it on the test stand anyway that'll be tomorrow I'll get that finished and then um, probably Thursday be able to get it back on the runway again so that's my update for the first half of this week thanks again for watching and tune in again on Saturday